Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England, and this is part three in the final part of the Getting Started with Visual Studio 2012 using Web Forms. And again, I'm working with the default Web Forms uh, project that we have and we've created. And I've gone through a few of the other things. And today, what I'm, the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to make it so that we can create new pages and check for authentication. That's pretty much it. So what I'm going to do first here is um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take this default page that I have that I've created that I have as part of the project, and I want to make this default page uh, authenticate, and I'm going to change it. So really, what I'm doing is I'm saying I want to start with a page I already have, and I want to make some modifications to it. So I can come over here and I can right click, and I can say copy. Okay, I'm going to make a copy of it. I go up to my project, and I right click, and I go, oh, right click, and I go paste. And if I come back down, I'm going to see copy of default.aspx. Now, if I try to run this, I should get an error. Okay, And that error is the fact that when I made that copy of this, the sample application default page um, now has two of them. The class that was created here, when I renamed the page, or when I created this copy, it actually made it with the same partial class. Well, there's a few things I want to do to this. One is... I don't want to call this copy of default anyway. I want to go through here and I'm going to I'm going to select rename and I'm going to rename this default logged in. That by the way is not going to fix my my error that I had. If I run it again, I'm going to have the same error that there's a build error that that default does exist. And what will happen is if you look at the files here, I've got default logged in. If I look at this C sharp file, the partial class is d underscore default. Okay, right there. I don't want that to be default. They should all be default logged in. Up here at the top, I can see that it did a code behind this default logged in.aspx.cs. So it's pointing to the right file, but the page itself is not the correct page. So what do I do to fix this? Well, one is I don't want to inherit default. I want to I want to inherit default logged in. Okay. That's going to be the class that it inherits from. So I'm changing the name of all the classes. If I go over here to the default logged in, I'm going to change this to default logged in. And I have one other place, which is in the designer. If I bring up the designer, I want that to be default logged in. So now all of them are default logged in. And if I run this, the default logged in looks, I'll bring it over here, will look just like the default page because it's a copy of the default page. The beauty of being able to do that is that I can now take a page that already exists and instead of writing a lot of code from scratch, I can use a lot of the existing code and start building the page that I want to build from this. But you see that to do that, I had to change a few names there. So now I've taken care of the designer page, the c -sharp page, and the ASPX page, and now they all read with the exact same default logged in. Well, first thing I want to do is I want to I'm going to leave the page the same, but I want to go to the C Sharp here. And if you're not logged in, I don't want you to be able to see this page. So I have to do something to make that happen. So I'm going to use one of the intrinsic, intrinsic objects to, to do that. And that intrinsic object that allows me to check the login status is, is the context. So if not, okay, that's the exclamation point, if not context dot, and one of my options is user dot identity dot okay is authenticated now that will just give me a true or false if the user is authenticated it returns true so not will return false if the user is not authenticated so we want it to do something else so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it to the other page default response so I'm going to use the and then by the way I'm using another intrinsic object called the response and I'm going to use the redirect. And I'm going to send this to default.aspx. So in other words, if they're not logged in, I'm going to go to the other page, which is just default. So now I have a page called default logged in, and I have a page called default. Default, anybody can go to, and default logged in will always read back, redirect you back to the default page if you're not logged in. Now, a little bit about intrinsic objects. You just saw one intrinsic object called context. And context is actually of 
It's a, it's a class of type HTTP context. It is an already pre-instantiated class, uh, uh, instantiation of that class. And it's essentially like a global variable context. Okay? Response is the same thing. And there's a few others that you're going to use. Context, response, application, server, session, and request. Okay? And I'm going to write them all down here for you inside of a comment. They are application, server, session, and request. Those are all instantiated objects that you can use on any page within the C-sharp files or actually within the ASPX. Okay, So I've used two, context and response. And those are two very handy things to do, context.user, the context, and the response.redirect to actually send you to another page. Now what will happen if I run this? Well, if I am logged off of the system, okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and start the system up again. Now, it takes a second here to, to come up, but in this case, I'm on the page default. If I try to go to default logged in, which I can just do by typing it into the URL, notice it went right back to default. It wouldn't let me do it because I'm not logged in. If I log in, okay, here's my login and password. Okay. Now, I'm in default.aspx. If I now go to default logged in, okay, this time it actually lets me stay on the page default logged in. Well, what's the big advantage now? You kind of saw that I've got it's the same page as default. Well, now the advantage is I can come over here and stop, and I can go to this default logged in page, and a lot of code that I had in the default page already existed that I wanted to be able to use. So now what I can do is I can start going into here and say, you know, now I'm going to change the page title, or I don't need to make this page title. I can call this now logged in. Me my application name. I can now change out all this. I can throw in some buttons, but I now have a page that is only accessible if you're logged in. One other step that you would want to do here, which is kind of an interesting step, is well. When the user logs in, wouldn't you like to redirect them to the default logged in page? So let's do that one last little thing here. The login page is up here, login.aspx, and it uses a login control. So if we look at this control here, and I can now move this over, I have login, ASP login, that's a login control, run at, view state mode, render outer table. Okay, well, now what I can do is I can look at this the properties and methods here and I will as I, as I go down through this entire big list of property I'm gonna find that there's a property called destination page URL and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to default logged in dot ASPX I'm gonna save the page and okay, now I'll close the up uh, I'm gonna close the old page I'm gonna run this now It takes again, it takes a second to come up. I'm in my login page. I actually want to be logged off. So let's log in. Okay, let's log in again. Okay, I went through my login process. Now, in this case, you can see I got one slight problem here. Okay, and this is one that you'll need to be able to debug. The requested URL, and, it, and you should always read these messages. This is a relatively easy pro problem. You see that you've got account default logged in. Well, if you look at that, default logged in actually exists in the root directory, but the login page exists in the account directory. That's relatively straightforward to fix, but let's fix this the right way. Let's actually point out by putting the tilde slash that this is a root directory destination page, and let's save off on that. Okay, I'm going to run it one more time. And this time we should be able to get this guy up and running. Okay, again, that ability to fix the problem is very important. The ability to debug, because you're going to be doing a lot of debugging. Not everything's going to work the first try. 
deciphering those messages and knowing how to get it to do what you want to do is important. So now I'm going to hit login. Now, notice it looks just like the, the default page, but if you look at the URL, you'll notice you're now default logged in. And now <clears throat> I can start building my application from this shell, having pages that are accessible to users that are logged in and pages that are accessible to users that are not logged in or haven't created a login. Thank you very much. This should get you up and running. Everything from here is going to be right in code. Thank you very much.